All right, so here we are at uh, Tri Lakes, uh, the uh, the night before, the night after. Yes, indeed, it's LA Night Jam, uh, Saturday, June the 18th. Uh, a few of our competitors are practicing, the first of them, uh, Brittany Greenwood. What was it like jumping under the lights there for the first time in quite a while? Ooh, it was a bit fast, but it was fun. It's always fun to ski, especially under the lights. Different feeling from jumping in the day. Okay, so what has everyone been telling you about how to approach this? Uh, because there's certainly different schools of thought, you know. Uh, obviously, when you drive at night, everything comes to you a little bit quicker. Is it is it analogous to that, wouldn't you say? I would say so. That um, lack there of light makes everything go a bit faster. So you have to pick out your markers, make sure you're trying to keep it the same as the day, but uh, try to control that heart rate and your mind to not let it trick you. Okay, so a couple more questions. What do you, what do you think you are capable of jumping uh, under these uh, similar c uh, conditions tomorrow night, provided that you make it that far? I think there's a really good chance to jump well. This is a really good place to jump. It is really well lit, so I think, you know, over 50 meters for sure, 165 plus 170s is definitely capable of doing that. Okay, and what do you think it's honestly going to take to win? Over 175 for sure. All right, then. Thank you very much, uh, Brittany Greenwood, and best of luck going forwards. Thank you. All right, then. Fresh off the water, Taryn Grant uh, uh, out there practicing for LA Night Jam. How did it feel out there for you? Um, you know, it, it felt pretty good. I was happy with my practice set. I built on every jump. Um, first jump I ended up passing, but I kind of got a feeling of the lights. Um, second jump, I hit the ramp, which was good. I uh, just crushed it a little bit. And third jump, I mean, it couldn't get much better for me just building on every jump, going over and having a, a decent jump on that third jump. Just got comfortable out there, comfortable with how it feels, how what the speed is like, um, and it being in the dark, obviously. <laughs> yeah, you seem to be beaming coming off the water are uh, uh, happy that you got the chance to, to go out there at night you know so you yeah, confidence success out here yeah definitely definitely gives me confidence um, confidence going into tomorrow obviously we have the prelims first and then and then night night final so I'm hoping to be out there at night again tomorrow all right then best of luck going forwards Taryn Grant of Canada thank you Tony okay continuing to get fresh reaction uh, from our uh, female jumpers uh, practicing in for LA Night Jam, we got uh, Lauren Morgan. Uh, how was it out there for you? Oh, it was fun. Anytime you get to ski at night is super fun. I haven't done it in quite a while, I think since last Nationals or something. So it's fun to get out there. Of course, it always feels fast and crazy, but yeah. So what kind of adjustments do you uh, do you typically make out there? You know, because it's a heck of a lot different from the daytime where you have the full view of the jump and uh, have a full control over what you're doing out there, yeah? Yeah, actually quite the opposite. Like you try to just make no adjustments. You try to do the exact same thing as you do in the day um, and try to sort of like memorize your movements so that way you don't rely on your perception so much when you're out there. And every jump set to you is valuable considering the amount of time that uh, that your job takes away from being able to practice on a consistent basis, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, excited. I got to come up here a couple days early and train, so that was nice. Excellent stuff. So what do you think it's going to take to win? To win? Uh, probably like upper 170s at night, I would say, would be uh, pretty safe. All right, then. And we wish you the best of luck at uh, the Masters Women's Jump Champion. That's Lauren Morgan. Thank you. All right, fresh off the water, uh, uh, practicing for LA Night Jam. Uh, we got Hannah Strotz over. Uh, your your initial reaction to uh, to what you felt out there on the water? I mean, how much different is it to what you'd ordinarily practice on during the daytime? Uh, everything just felt faster than usual. It seems like your brain works slower, and but you can see everything fine. Like there is no dark spots. Um, and that's it. I think I think it was fine. I didn't jump. I did three passes just to feel the speed uh -huh. and should be okay for tomorrow. Okay. Okay, so you didn't find any kind of difficulties like fix, getting a fix on the five, six, seven hundred buoys or anything like that? No, it's more like you go a little earlier because you want to protect yourself and you, wanna, you don't want to be rushed. 
and I knew I wouldn't jump, so it was kind of chill. <laughs> Excellent stuff. So, uh, what do you reckon it's going to take to win here tomorrow night? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> All right, then playing it very closer, closer to the vest. That's Hanna Stoltz over. We uh, wish you the best of luck going forwards. Thank you, Tony. All right, getting some fresh reaction uh, from the dock uh, after her uh, practice set. Uh, Janina Bonneman, uh, how was your experience out there? It was awesome. Like, the site is uh, well lit up and um, the lights are nice and bright. So um, I had a good feeling out there and um, I'm excited what's to come tomorrow. Okay, uh, any, any different to, to what you've experienced last season uh, with Unite Jumps? I know you jumped at uh, the U.S. Nationals under, under the lights, and, uh, and I think you went at King of Darkness, didn't you? I did not go at King of Darkness. I was injured from Worlds uh, still, so I skipped that one, but I had my fi first night jump at U.S. Open, and from what I remember, it was just a lot of fun. So I'm excited. Um, to for tomorrow I like I hope I get into the finals and then uh, get to go out at night under the assumption that you would make it through to the finals what do you reckon it's going to take to win that's really hard to say but I I'm pretty sure it's going to be like I mean at night the scores are always maybe a little bit lower but like probably a 170 I would say for sure like one 175 175 okay we wish you the best of luck going forwards uh, Janina Bonneman of Germany thank you very much thank you all right, continuing to get fresh reaction among our uh, women who are practicing on the the nights before the uh, the big event, uh, Sasha Danyushkaya. Uh, how was things out there for you? Uh, it was fun. Like I think it went well. We had a plan. It worked. So feeling excited for tomorrow. Yeah, I saw you spoke a little bit with Scott Ellis, who is your coach. I mean, yeah. what advice did he offer before, and what was his uh, kind of reaction after after seeing you uh, jump out there? Well, I mean, there is no difference between today and tomorrow, so I treat it like as another tournament round don't go easy find the rhythm and just go first so yeah it was good what do you think it's going to take for the win uh, provided you get there oh it's hard to tell i feel like uh, the set is well lit up so i feel like definitely about 170. around about 170. Uh, maybe a little bit more uh, it's hard to tell depends on the wind and stuff so if it stays calm like this i feel like it's nice to jump so i feel like between 170 and 175. All right then, that sounds good. Uh, Sasha Denyuskaya, World Women's Overall Champion, thank you very much and best of luck to you. Thank you so much. All right, switching gears from uh, from women's jump to men's jump. Uh, uh, one of the one of the first uh, skiers to hit the water was uh, Freddy Krueger, so uh, didn't hit the ramp uh, during that practice. But uh, what did it feel like out there for you? Uh, feels good. Lights are good and even. Um, you know, it's dark. Everything feels fast. Just trying to get a, a couple of visuals there to figure out the timing if uh, I get a chance for tomorrow. I'm a little early on the first two. I, I really like the third jump. Kind of got to take that one. That's where I'd like to start tomorrow. Take that one and see you know, if I've got to, you know, probably will need to push my timing a little bit more on the, the last two, hopefully. But um, you know, this night jump, it's a it's an animal in itself. Um, I I would love to have gone over and you know kind of completed the picture and finished, but uh, not worth taking the chance of funny landing or tweaking something right here before the event. So we're gonna wait and see. Of course, and uh, I mean you've got, I mean you have Karen True Love uh, uh, looking at you and assessing how things uh, went. Uh, what what was her reaction uh, after after you came in? Did they mirror a lot a lot of what you thought out there? Yeah, I think um, you know she liked. We, we had a, a practice round today in the daylight, and uh, she kind of liked what she saw. Uh, again, a little early, so not really getting my lift off the ramp like I wanted to. Um, you know, again, you know, shift that gear a little bit more tomorrow. Um, tonight, again, you know, she was pretty much seeing the same thing, which is good because there's there's a lot of times I'll come in and think, oh, you know, I thought that was pretty good, and she'll see kind of a litany of things. Well, you know, you're doing this, that, 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 that. you know, everything I I was feeling out there, she was seeing, she could agree with that. So that's a good sign. That typically means that uh, then you know, almost my, becomes like a honey do list type deal. Well, it, <laughs> the main thing is is it, 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 it so much of this is a mental aspect, right? And so there will be times where uh, you, you know maybe it feels awful to you, it doesn't look so bad to them, but to me the scarier situation situation is when I, it feels okay to me but when she's watching it she really doesn't like what she sees that puts me in a position that you know you're kind of 
you know, you're, you're doing a, like a full eject back to like just absolute basics. So, um, you know, there's some big keys for me. I, I have a tend to shift my eyes down at the wakes and at the bottom of the jump in the dark because there's, you know, it's harder to see things in that ambient area. Um, so the third one, I, you know, I said I like that one. I did a good job of shifting my eyes and getting them where I wanted. I really didn't on the other three. So I got I to gotta be a lot better on my percentages for that tomorrow. All right. You hold the course record here with 240 feet and it also happened to be in the dark as well. You feel like uh, rolling back the years and uh, getting somewhere close. <sighs> yeah, man, I hope it doesn't take that to, to you know, take this thing because that's, uh, that's going to be a big jump in the absolute still of, of uh, this Louisiana swamp water of air we're breathing right now and this humidity is unbelievable. So, um, you know, I'm figuring it's going to take over 230 to take it home. Um, I'd love to be the guy that does that, but, you know, we just you got to get out there and see how it shakes out. One of the best of all time, Freddy Krueger. Uh, wishing you the best of luck going forward, sir. Thanks, Tony. All right, continuing to get some Mr. Reaction among our men's competitors. Dorian Llewellyn, uh, not taking a, a jump out there, uh, free refusals. Uh, uh, how, how do the conditions uh, look like? Uh, uh, could we be uh, seeing fireworks from you? Uh, yeah, I hope so. Um, like I said earlier, before I went out and skied, uh, I'm a bit banged up right now. But, you know, it's it feels awesome out there. The boat feels good. The wakes are small, which, you know, if you hit them right, you're going to come through flying. Um, and the ramp's nice. So, yeah, those are good recipes for success. All right, then. So, uh, I mean, I mean, you obviously have people watching over you, coaches, that kind of stuff. What, what has their advice been under these kind of uh, situations, uh, how to approach? Yeah, I mean, my dad's obviously been at the LA Night Jams. He's, uh, he's been right there at the top with Freddie and, and Ryan every year. Um, and, I, yeah, actually, we were watching the... I think it was the 2008, or I might be getting my years mixed up right now, but uh, Freddie and my dad had a grudge match, one one jump, jump off uh -huh. um, in the finals, so that was really cool, and Ryan and I were getting all excited watching that, but uh, yeah, no, my dad uh, and my mom are back home, just going to be watching this one, and you know, just same as always, go out there, have fun, and obviously just do your best, and, and you know, it, if you've trained in the right ways, and you don't have to worry about anybody else, you just worry about yourself and go out there and put out a big jump. Freddie believes it's going to take over 230 to win, do you agree? Yeah, I think so. The way that the boat feels and the jump feels good and the conditions are awesome, so I don't see why we wouldn't have at least one over 230, if not, if not multiple. All right then, Dorian Llewellyn, thank you very much uh, for your uh, for your participation and uh, best of luck going forwards. Thanks. All right, continuing to get some reaction from our uh, competitors who are practicing here for LA Night Jam, uh, Jack Critchley. Uh, unlike many of the others who had uh, gone out and practiced, you actually took a few jumps. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, not quite as smart as everyone else, I guess, but. Um I don't want anything to catch me out. If I make the finals tomorrow, I want to know what it's going to feel like. I want to know what it's going to look like when I hit the jump too. So I don't mind. I can do some easy cuts and just try and get over the jump just to see what it looks like. Almost seemed that you were jumping better out there in the dark than you do during the daytime. That was most probably close, maybe even further than I've been all week, maybe. Yeah. Uh, easy cut, but hopefully if I do make the final, then we can start with that one and then work from there. And hopefully boost a big one in the final if I make it. All right then, assuming that you do make it through to, to the final, what do you reckon it's going to take so far as a distance to, to, to win this thing? Uh, going off of what I just did, I, I think it's going to be a mid-20 to win, a mid-20, 20, 25, 225 maybe. Um, Freddie believes it's over 230. Freddie believes it's over 230, I don't know. I'm not sure, I'm not quite as optimistic as Freddie. I'm hoping I'll win, but I don't know if I'll do a 230, so <laughs> we'll say 25. <laughs> All right, and we wish you the best of luck going forwards, uh, Jack Critchley. All right, uh, we've got another one of our ML jumpers who's just come into the dock. Uh, it's uh, Joel, uh, Joel Poland, the current uh, Masters uh, men's uh, jump champion. Uh, Seem to be enjoying life right now, especially out there in the dark. Yeah, I was having a wicked time. That was really fun. We got a small little crowd here. It kind of felt like I was jumping for the VIPs today. We got all the Bennett staff out there. It was pretty cool. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, let's earwigging a little bit to what you were saying or what was being said around the uh, the dock area. Uh, I mean, I mean, you you put a jump out there that would almost certainly put you through to the next round if it were during the daytime and might and could in actuality win. 
Yeah, I mean, I just kind of was going out to try and find a nice spot. And I found it on the second one, which was good, because I was hoping I'd get it by the third. Found a real nice spot, and then just didn't trust it into the ramp on the second. And on the third, I really kind of pulled it together and didn't get the most out of the jump ramp. But there's a lot in there. I mean, I think there's a lot of potential to that jump if I can replicate it tomorrow. All right, and what kind of distance uh, or what do you think it will take to actually win this event? Oh, I won't be surprised if it's 2.30. Yeah, he seems to be in lockstep uh, with uh, Freddy Krueger. I wish you the best of luck going forward. So, Joel Poland, world overall champion and current uh, Masters uh, men's jump champion. Best of luck to you, sir. Ciao for now. All right, continuing to get some fresh reaction uh, from uh, the uh, the night jump practice and one of our young contenders coming into this event, uh, Will Roberts. Uh, what was it like out there for you? Oh, it was cool. Um, just wanted to go slip around and see what the lights looked like. It looked really good out there. Um, hadn't jumped at night since 2019, and I was going 32 or 51, so um, felt good, and I just wanted to get a look in, so felt good. A lot of it is trying to make that adjustment uh, between day and night, and uh, obviously Obviously, if any if any of you ever driven out on a country road at night, you know how things come into you a lot quicker. Is that is that a fair analogy? Yeah, definitely. Um, just gotta trust your spot, trust what you know, and um, just go out there and just ski like it's daytime, and don't let your eyes deceive you. So, this is new to me, and just definitely gotta definitely gotta make that transition. But felt good tonight. So, what do you reckon it's gonna take to win? Oh. I mean, we got Freddie and Ryan here and Joel and everyone, so you got to expect something close to like 70, 230, so that's sort of where I'd peg it, but we'll see you tomorrow night. All right then, Will Roberts, uh, best of luck to you going forward uh, here at LA Night Gen. Cool, thanks. All right, uh, coming off the uh, the water, having taken his uh, practice set, uh, Luke Outram from Great Britain, and uh, you seem to be uh, uh, pleasantly uh, uh, well pleased with your effort out there. Yeah, super pleased with that. I originally, I was always going to take a single, and then I just because I'm assuming that the caliber of jumpers that are here right now is going to be a long, long way to make the final. So I thought maybe this is my only chance to night jump, and I was originally going to cut and pass. I did my first one, cut and pass, and saw how bright and well lit the site is. I thought, yeah, we're good. I'm taking the next two, and I'm glad I did. That was a really cool experience. All right then. So that ha has that uh, uh, given you cause for optimism going forward? Uh, may may maybe. Yeah, like I've been jumping well the past few weeks. Um, I had a couple of the weather's not been great here the past couple of weeks. We've been predominantly tailwind, but it might be a tailwind tomorrow, and I don't know if the guys can deal with it, whether they can change the conditions. So, and I have I have a home site advantage, so maybe I can put one out, and everyone else doesn't. It's not their day. I could make the finals. We'll have to wait and see. All right, then we certainly right. wish you the, be the best of luck going forwards. Uh, what would you say would be the winning jump? Uh, Freddie Belize, uh, or two two thirty, and uh, one or two others have seen to uh, jail with that. I think we're going to be having to go high teens, 20s to make the final. And in the final, if, you know, at the end of the day, it's a night jump for money. The boys always bring it when there's some money involved. I think we could see a jump in the 30s. Definitely high 20s. Could be one in the 30s. All right, then. Excellent stuff there. Uh, Luke Outram, uh, the best of luck going forward uh, with this competition and also with the World Games coming up in a few weeks afterwards. Thanks, Tony. All right then, getting some uh, getting some fresh opinion uh, from uh, from the lake, uh, uh, practicing for LA Night Jam. Ethan McKinnon from Australia. Uh, you've probably uh, been in a few night jump situations uh, before Moomba and the like, but how how does this compare? Uh, it's definitely. I know. I was looking at it before I went out, and I thought it was uh, probably a little brighter than Moomba. Uh, actually, out there, I think Moomba. It's it's a little brighter at Moomba. It's a little it feels a little dark out there, Tony. Oh, okay, so you played it a little bit cautiously, uh, you know, uh, uh, cards, cards to your chest type deal? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was just planning to go out. I'm here to have fun, so I was just planning to go out and do a do a couple of three quarters over the ramp. I only ended up taking one because I couldn't get my timing, but it was fun. It's a good time. Top banana. Absolutely, absolutely top banana. And uh, what do you reckon it's going to take to win from your perspective? Oh, from my perspective, I think... Seeing the way these guys have been jumping through like this past day, I'd say high 220s, uh, like mid to high 220s, probably the win. All right. I would say. Okay, these okay. guys are jumping pretty damn good. All right then. Well, we certainly wish you the best of luck going forwards from Australia. That is Ethan McKinnon. Appreciate you, Tony. Okay, and our uh, last uh, last person who uh, practiced in the in the dark is Austin uh, Kolodacek. 
Pretty close, Tony. Okay. Call it a check. Call it a check. Okay. I'm tr- yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. So notwithstanding mispronunciations, uh, how was your experience out there? Uh, this is my second or second or third time jumping the night jump. My first one was for Collegiate Nationals last year, mm-hmm. and it was just the most exciting thing for me because unlike most of the guys here, I did not grow up in the sport. I started when I was a freshman at A&M. You know, landing my first jump at my first tournament in Collegiate, and now I'm, you know, jumping up in that open level. <laughs> okay, it's certainly an experience to, that you that you want to go out and do again. I mean, I saw uh, saw and heard the reaction from you coming into the dock. I mean, it's uh, it, it certainly opens one eyes as to the possibilities that this uh, this uh, this event can provide to uh, to a large crowd. Yeah, certainly. I think putting this under the lights, inviting people out when it's, you know, the sun ain't beating on them. This will put together a large crowd for the sport and, you know, get a lot of eyes on us. All right, then. So, with uh, without, uh, from your perspective, what do you think it's going to take for our pros uh, to win? I think you're going to need a strong 220-foot jump this weekend. I mean, you got Joel Poland and Freddie and Ryan all going at it. And you got some underdogs, too, coming out of the works like Luke and Ethan. All right then. So thanks a lot, Austin, uh, for your input, and uh, thanks to uh, to all the rest of our uh, our competitors who have uh, practiced out there in the in the night before the main event, LA Night Jam, uh, 2022. It's uh, going to be on the night of uh, June the 18th. We thank those guys very much indeed, and thank you very much for listening. This is the latest edition of the TWBC podcast. Until next time, it is ciao for now. Thank you for listening to the TWBC podcast. Be sure to check out our website at waterskibroadcasting.com. Links to our presence on major social media platforms can be found there, as well as updates to our webcast and this podcast. Duplication or rebroadcasting of this broadcast without written consent of TWBC is prohibited. Subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to join us next time for the next edition of the TWBC podcast.